What's up guys? So I've been getting a lot of requests to tour a Gemini catamaran. Now, the reason being because they are typically more affordable, they're smaller catamarans, and they're pretty good little coastal cruising boats. They're also narrow enough that they can typically fit into a normal slip and you don't need to have an extra wide berth for them. They're only 14 feet wide, and obviously because they are 34 feet long, they are pretty small and they're easy to take care of, but because they're a catamaran, they have a lot of interior volume and a lot of living space. Anyway, quickly before we get to the tour, I just want to remind you guys to hit that like button and that subscribe button if you haven't already and you're enjoying these videos. Doing that is the single best way you can support this channel and keep these videos coming. So thank you in advance and without further ado, let's get to the tour. So one thing of note out here on the exterior portion of the boat, these are kick-up rudders. So those can go up and the draft of this boat is going to be very small. It also looks like underneath the hulls you have a swinging dagger board down there. So again, it's going to be a very shallow draft that looks to be probably about a foot and a half maybe two at most. Alright guys, I just stepped aboard, came up that sugar scoop there, We've got a dinghy on davits off the transom, and looking forward, we got our cockpit. Nice big cockpit for a 35 footer. Let's go ahead and go forward and we'll come back to the cockpit and the sugar scoops. So far I do notice a lot of crazing of the gel coat. That actually surprises me. Typically that's not structural, but there's definitely a lot of it. Got our boom sitting on the coach roof right there. Looking up the mast. Double spreader mast. Four shrouds on each side along with two back stays and a four stay. And then also a baby stay right there, so really you've got two four stays. Let's go forward. These side decks right here are pretty narrow as you guys can see. Coach roof comes out pretty far. That's going to maximize interior volume, but it makes going forward not as easy. Now these catamarans have a solid foredeck. They don't have trampolines, as you can see. That offers a lot of solid space up here, which is nice. But in a rough seaway, you know, you're going to want those trampolines because this is going to pound. I am off of the starboard bow now and I'm going to take a look back at the catamaran. I do have to say I think this is a good looking catamaran. It is a narrower catamaran. I believe the beam is only about 14 feet wide so it can go into most normal slips. That's actually one of the big pluses of the Gemini Cats. Got our anchor on anchor roller right here. Chain goes down into the chain locker right there. I am on the port bow now, turning aft. There's a compartment on the port side here, but not on the starboard side. So let's go ahead and take a look. That's nice. That's a nice big storage compartment right there. Looks like we've got lots of hatches, good ventilation. I'm actually interested as to what this baby stay is for. It's really, really small. And, you know, maybe it's for a, a storm jib, but that would be a tiny storm jib. You've got your roller furring head sail right here. Let's 
Got your mainsail with the stack pack and lazy jacks right there. I don't see any lines going aft, so I do believe your halyards and everything, you're gonna have to come up to the mast to raise the sail and the reef. All right, going aft. So we've got this port side deck here. Again, you can see, you know, it's pretty narrow. You could walk on this wider section right here, but then you don't really have, you know, anything to hold on to and you could potentially fall over the lifeline. So I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you know, if you're careful, you just walk like this and then you grab on to this. All right, guys, I am on the aft end port side and I'm looking at the cockpit. This is going to be a big plus of this design. This is a really nice big cockpit, nice and protected. This helm position, super protected. Right now you can't, but I believe this pops out. You can see through this, through that forward window pretty easily, and you can see forward. You can also obviously look out the side. But I do like this home station a lot. It's very safe, very protected, looks comfortable. And then this cockpit, you know, for a small cat and a narrow small cat at that, it's kind of nice. Got some storage back here. There was an engine back here, but it doesn't look like there is one now. And more storage. All right, so I just opened that. We just looked in there. It does look like there is a compartment back here. And yeah, so there definitely should be an engine in that compartment. That's gonna be your out drive. There's nothing driving this boat, so maybe that's why it's so cheap. So it looks like it's just storage in the sugar scoop compartment. So this is the starboard sugar scoop. So I've got a generator sitting on the other compartment, so I'm not going to move that. But that should just be storage as well. All right, guys, I think it's time to go down below. All right, guys, this boat looks much better on the inside. So when you first come in, obviously you can see you've got a nice big raised bridge deck salon table here. This also becomes a berth, really nice seating area. And then where I'm standing, you can actually see forward. Take a look at this, guys. All right, so this is a really nice location, to be honest with you, because you're fully protected from everything. And then you can see right out there, so granted you have to stand, but this isn't a bad spot to be, you know, when it's rough out or rainy out or cold out. So, so that's the main settee directly to port. There's a little, I guess you'd call this the nav station. You've got your distribution panels here, your radio, there's a TV down there. Looks like this boat may have air conditioning. And then taking a look to the starboard side. There's this little kind of bar area where you have a fridge right there and some counter space. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go into the starboard hull first. Looking forward. So this is a galley down, as you guys can see. This is your galley. However, it is doesn't really feel like a galley down because you are still very much a part of the main salon area. This is kind of nice. I like this design a lot. You've got storage right here for food and stuff. I love food and stuff. And then cold storage. As well as a sink and then a stove. And you've got nice view outside as well. Nice little kitchen. All right, let's look aft. So back here you've got a little double berth, this little aft cabin. Can't complain about this. This is only a 35 foot catamaran, so got to keep that in mind. Looks to be a hanging locker here, although there is no door. 
a little bit more storage down there. Looking forward. Looks like you have a tie rod for the chain plates here. And I think this is going to be the highlight of the boat, guys. This is a queen size bridge deck berth in the forward section of the boat here. And then you've got, you know, another little area right there. It could be used as storage or perhaps a crib. <laughs> I would I would think actually I, I could put, you know, a little baby crib there or something like that. Kind of build that into the boat. And then you've got closed storage on this side right here. And then when you're at anchor or whatever, if you're laying in this bed, you've got pretty much view forward of where you're going, which is kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and turn around. This is the storage on the starboard side here. So ample amounts of storage for your clothes and whatnot. I'm gonna go ahead and go aft. And then the porthole, as you can see, pretty close. It's gotta go up a little bit, down a little bit, and now we're in the porthole. So this area, seems to me it's almost kind of underutilized you know you, you do have like some counter space and some storage right but you know realistically like i don't know what else you do here but it does almost seem a little underutilized you got more storage right here maybe like a desk or something and then when you go forward, on the port side forward section of the boat, you've got a full head. It is a wet head, but it is a nice head. Everything's meant to get wet. Nice and roomy. Got your shower right there by my feet. Very nice. And then finally, in the port side aft section of the boat, you've got a port aft cabin. So another double berth. This one's kind of used as storage, but pretty much the same as the other side, just mirrored. You do have some storage, a little bit on each side there. It looks like the current owner is kind of using it as a closet, which not a bad way to use it. All right, guys, it's time for the full continuous below decks walkthrough from bow to stern. I am starting in the port side forward section of the boat. That is going to be the head. All right, guys, starting in the head in here, I do have to say my head hits the ceiling a little bit. So the headroom in here is probably only about 5'10", maybe a little less, and it gets lower the more forward you go. Then you go through this door. I do have to duck my head here. I'm about 5'11 with shoes on, by the way. And I can just barely stand in these hulls, okay? So that gives you a good idea of what the headroom is. I'm going to go ahead and take a look. This aft cabin again. Turning to starboard. This is definitely one of the highlights of the boat right here. I know I said the forward cabin was the highlight of the boat. That might be, but this is probably either a close second or this could be number one. I don't know, depending on what your opinion is. But this is a very, very nice part of the boat. Very wide, very open. Nice place to live. Got your helm station right there and your cockpit right there. Nice and close to the main salon. Going down, we've got your other aft cabin, your starboard side aft cabin. Got your galley right here. Again, I can stand, but just barely. And then I do have to duck my head to get through the doorways. And then we've got a very spacious, very nice queen size forward cabin. 
in a 35 foot boat. So how many 35 foot boats have a queen size bed in them? Not too many. This is real nice. And that's it guys. All right guys, so I think that boat had a lot going for it, but it definitely had some very distinct negatives as well. Let's first talk about the overall design and not the specific boat. I think the design works well and is good as a coastal cruiser, which is exactly what it was designed to do. These boats are definitely not designed to sail around the world. They're meant to island hop, coastal cruise, go through inland waterways. It'd be a good boat to do the Great Loop with, though you'd have to take the mast down, I imagine. But yeah, I mean, it offers a lot of living space in a small pack package for an affordable price tag. Now obviously depending on how old the boat is and you know the condition it's in, these boats are typically going to go for between $60,000 maybe at the bottom end to well into the $200,000 you know price range. And that's going to be for like pretty new or brand new ones. These boats are still made to this day. Now about this particular boat, it's a 2000 Gemini 105 MC. I think the positives on this particular boat was that the interior and all that stuff was in really good shape. The negatives are obviously going to be the lack of engine and the exterior crazing. Just the general exterior of the boat wasn't in very good shape. So the asking price for this particular boat is going to be in the description below, just like all of our videos. Let me know if you think it's overpriced. I I am tending to say it might be just given the exterior condition and the lack of engine but I'm not really an expert on how much these boats are worth so I'd be curious to see what you have to say obviously relative to other catamarans on the market this is somewhat affordable anyway I do think this is a good coastal cruiser not really suitable for long extended offshore passages there's just it's just not designed for it. The beam's too narrow, the solid floor deck just doesn't work in rough seas, the bridge deck clearance is probably too low. There's, you know, a list of things. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments down below. The contact information for the person selling this boat is gonna be in the description below, as well as the current asking price. As always, if you enjoyed this one, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell if you wanna know each and every time we drop a video. See you guys. I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire And let it